Hello boys and girls, a very good evening and welcome to this live score booster for your SBI clerks preliminary exam brought to you by Talent Sprint. Well, today is 19th of Feb and we have no clue about when the preliminary exam would be held. But assuming that even if it happens in the mid of March, you have just about four weeks left for this exam. In fact, just less than four weeks left for the exam. So it's high time that you pull your socks up and start practicing really hard and give as much as possible to your preparation so that you can maximize your chances of selection in the primary exam right now i am uh, also glad to see so many of you joining the live uh, score booster here and i'm hoping that these sessions are helping you enhance your preparation right like i've always said just following these sessions alone is not going to help you get ready for the exam you have to do a full-fledged preparation either by you know joining a coaching center of your choice or you know going through some other mode of preparation but then you have to do a full uh, preparation and add these score boosters as uh, additional uh, learning elements to it okay so please keep that in mind and yes keep practicing because practice is the only shortcut right the more you practice the easier it gets now in the session today uh, score booster number 15 uh, to be precise we'll be looking at a very not so interesting topic in my view but yeah we'll be looking at a very important topic from bank exams point of view especially from the sba clerks exam point of view and this was one topic which was uh, kind of uh, uh, highlighted in my last session right many students wanted me to do a session on this so we have chosen coding and decoding for the score booster today in fact this is the new pattern of coding and decoding uh, that we'll be discussing today okay if you recall uh, in my earlier score booster i think it was number 14 where we had solved a question from arrangements uh, a kind of a puzzle a floor based puzzle i guess and the learning was you know not every question in reasoning has to be answered right in fact if you ask me the best shortcut uh, for reasoning ability in bank exam is to learn when and how to skip a question or which type of questions to be skipped right the easiest way to maximize your score in reasoning section is to skip uh, the right questions right i mean it's it's very common it's applied in other genres as well like for example i, I usually take examples of cricket right so when you're when you're playing cricket right you are not there to hit every ball you are there to play a long innings you have to stand there for all the 20 50 overs so you have to leave certain balls right some balls are like really good leave the ball right you're respecting that good ball you're respecting the bowler so that's what you have to do in an exam as well right in a competitive exam as well similarly when you uh, when you go for let's say when you, when you are in a battle right you don't have to kind of respond to every uh, every you know what is it called every attempt of uh, fight with you right you sometimes try to dodge it and that's the strategy so here the strategy is to skip certain questions and i think that that is largely applicable for coding and decoding as well now some of you may not agree with me some of you may say that coding and decoding is actually very easy why do you want us to skip it but believe me guys coding and decoding not always is very easy because here it all depends on the right logic which may or may not strike to you at the right time right sometimes you get it sometimes you don't get it so it's wise that you don't spend too much of your time when you're solving such questions right so circular arrangements linear arrangements floor based puzzles other complex puzzles coding and decoding all this are in the same category in my view there is no method to solve these questions i repeat there is no method to solve these questions the only way to do is to go about you know the only way to go about is to you know follow trial and error you try with it if you get the log logic well and good otherwise you have to you know if you get an error try try again but you cannot be doing this repeatedly also in the exam right so keep in mind that the best way to solve these type of questions is to skip if you are not able to get it in the right time okay now having said that let me present the first question to you all now uh, if, if you recall or if you have seen some of the recent papers a new pattern has evolved in coding and decoding they give you a phrase or set of phrases along with codes right along with codes which involve a number a symbol and a letter so each word is coded using a number letter and a symbol now why that number why that letter why that symbol everything is not known to us i mean everything is unknown to us basically sometimes there could be two letters and one number sometimes there are like all three numbers so it it all depends see understand here the answer is it depends on what the logic is and how will you get that logic there's no way out just try and see if you are able to crack it so keeping that in mind let me present the first question from this new uh, pattern of coding and decoding which is on your screens now 
here we go so look at this now what does it say study the following information carefully and answer the questions given below in a certain code language complete the challenging job is written as q3 y x double one t g3 v x 7 v how was this job is written as g4 h d3 h q3 y s3 d and so on they are taking time is written as so and so and amazing work experience now is written as so and so now this is a common question type these kind of questions they are asked in our earlier bank exams also long ago but then those days the logic used to be finding out common words in these phrases and finding out the common codes and doing the mapping easy but these days it's not just based on mapping sometimes each word has got a unique way of getting coded and that you have to establish that you have to figure out so i leave you with this for about a uh, few seconds post which we'll look at the questions asked here right here the first question if you see is what is the code of challenging in the given uh, language so try it out let's see how many of you get the answer you may be able to establish some codes using the common words but for others you will have to you know decipher the logic there for which i repeat there is no method answers have started coming in b e and stuff we'll wait for more responses Correct. None of these. Okay. Pooja Pandey says X 11 T should be the right answer, which again is none of these. See, so most of you have got option E as the answer here. But when I see, uh, there are other responses as well, right? Uh, Bindri has got B. Madhu has got B. Sudhakar and Rahi. Sudhakar has got C. But then others like uh, Akhila, Sundar, Tony Francis, they've got B. So the confusion is, you know, largely between B and E. Sudhakar has got C as well, right? Yeah, so E, B or C is the question here. Okay, so let's take it up now. Here we go. So, All right, here we go. So look at what it says. In a certain code language, complete the challenging job is written as one, two, three, four codes have been given. Then here we have got another phrase of four words for which the code is given. They are taking time, code is given, an amazing work experience now. Again, the code is given to us, okay? Now he's asking us to find out the code for challenging in the given code. Similarly, we have what is the code for taking now? What does X7V stand for? What is the code of amazing and so on, okay? I think four or five questions based on this data and then we'll have different types of questions. So how do we answer this question? What do, how do we answer? See, if you try to find out common words, there are many common words here, like complete the challenging job. How was this job? They are taking time, amazing work experience now. So if I look at the first two phrases, the only common word is job, right? Job is common in the first two phrases. So obviously it's code also should be common. Now look at the codes Q3Y, X11T, G3V, X7V. Here we have G4H, D3H, Q3Y, S3. So the only common code is Q3Y. So I can now, you know, conclude that job is coded as Q3Y. Right, job is coded as Q3Y because that's the only uh, common code on in the, in the first two sentences. Similarly, if you try and compare others, you will be able to find out the other common codes as well. Uh, for example, what else is common? Amazing work experience now. No, they are taking time. How was this job? Nothing else is common. I think except job, nothing else is common. So now comes the question. How do we establish the code for other words? Like for example, challenging. The code for challenging will either be X11T or G3V or X7V. One of these three. Right? Now the question is what is the code of challenging? Challenge could either be, challenging will either be X7, X11T, G3V or X7V. Now 
x11 t is given x7 v is also given here in the options and fifth option none of this is also there so how do we figure out is the question how do we figure it out simple i mean not simple actually the logic after you know the logic it's obviously simple the, the logic works as follows if you look at the word job i'll tell you how q3y was established i mean we have already figured out q3y but let me tell you how q3y was established if you see each code here has got a starting letter a ending letter and a number in between every code here starts and ends with a letter starts and ends with a letter right and there is a number in between now this number if you observe is actually the number of letters in the word for example job has got three letters so that's how the number three has come here right it has got three letters so that's how the number three has come now the question is how did we get q and y so if i if i look at the other uh, words here complete has got how many letters one two three four five six seven eight eight the has got three letters job has got three letters challenging one two uh, you know five here five plus five ten plus one eleven eleven letters so if you observe the codes eleven complete has got how many letters eight letters i think there is no code with eight letters complete one two three four five six seven eight one two three eleven and three yeah but anyway i think something is wrong with the word complete here i think it should not be q7 y it should be i mean it should not be x7 v it should be x8 v because it has got eight letters but then otherwise the you know the process as follows since challenging has got 11 letters the code for challenging should be x11 v it should be x sorry x11 t x11 t just based on the number of letters i can figure out if i am confused about let's say two codes having the same number then i have to look at the uh, uh, the the way in which we arrive at letters here but for now for the current question i think we are clear that the answer should be x11 t so x11 t option 5 none of this has to be the answer you getting it option 5 none of this has to be answered i'm sure not all of you are satisfied here because you know you will also want to know how did we get x and t i'll explain that to you but then understand for this particular question i don't have to worry about uh, all that right similarly if i say like if i if i come to the next sentence then i am in a problem because how was this job three of the words have got three letters so it will be difficult for me to identify right three 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 the only word which has got four letters is this and the only code which has got four in between is g4h so i can you know uh, attribute g4h to this i can say this is called as g4h similarly here four letters three letters uh, six letters and four letters so i can say g60 is for taking and so on so if there is unique number of letters it's fine if there are unique number of letters in the word then it's easy to identify but there are same number of letters being different words then it will be problem so let us now also understand how do we uh, find out the full code so far we have only looked at the number how do we find out the full code easy if you observe the letter j the first letter here is j right j is 10th letter from starting in the english alphabet i mean when you write the english alphabet from a to z a b c d and so on up to x y z j comes out to be the 10th letter from the beginning q is the 10th letter from the end q is also the 10th letter but from the end so from the reverse order q is the 10th letter from the you know in the forward direction j is the 10th letter similarly b if you recall b is the second letter y is the second letter from the end y is you see first and six, second letter from the end this is second from the end b is second from the front so that's how you are actually getting the codes now that i've explained this to you it's very easy now that i've explained it's very easy to answer the questions but the question but the whole point is how many of us will get this idea in the exam how many of us will be able to figure out that this is the logic in the exam is the question so if i have to really look at challenging now the word challenging has got 11 letters so its code should have the number 11 its code should have the number 11 the first letter is c starting letter is c from the front it is c so from the end see this is third letter right c is the third letter from the front so what is the third letter from the end it will be x g g is the seventh letter from the uh, front so seventh letter from the end will be t so x 11 t is the answer x 11 t which is option 5 none of this now before we proceed with the next one let me also explain you how to find out the reverse letter how to find out the letter from the other end simple see x is the third letter from the front right x is the third letter from the front right so third letter so this is from front what is the third letter from sorry uh, c is the third letter from front i meant one second c is the third letter from front how do you get the third letter from the end simple there are total 26 letters 26 minus 3 plus one this is a this is a formula that we have discussed in the topic of ranking and ordering right when you know the position of a letter from the front end how do you get the position from the other end 
right simple 26 minus 3 plus 1 you just have to do this total number of letters in the english alphabet minus the position plus 1 always you have to do plus 1 y plus 1 has been explained in the videos you can just refer to those videos so 26 minus 3 is 23 plus 1 is 24 so 24 from the back what is 24 uh, 24th letter basically so third letter from front is c third letter from the end will be 24th letter from the front what is 24th letter from the front it is x so that's that's how i'm saying x is the answer you get it similarly when you look at g you know that g is the seventh letter so what is the seventh letter from the end 26 minus 7 19 19 plus 1 20 what is the 20th letter t so t should be the answer opposite of g will be t this is how it works and I think now that we have understood this, answering the remaining four or five questions will be a cakewalk. But again, I repeat the same question. How many of us do you think will be able to get this logic in the exam? And in fact, this is easier, I'll tell you, because only one number and two letters are involved. This can be made a lot more complex. There you use one symbol, randomly one symbol is used for each letter, right? A number is used and a letter is used. This is a new pattern. This is a new pattern that, you know, people are talking about. Well, like I mentioned in the beginning, there is no direct method to get the answer. It's about looking at the question, trying to observe the logic there, the, the code there and identifying the logic behind it. There is no shortcut or there is no formula as such that can give you the answer. That is the reason I say spend time, maybe about 15-20 seconds per question in the exam. But if you are not able to crack it, the easiest way is just go, going to the next one. You are able to follow? Let me present the next set of questions as well here and then we will look at some other models. So here's the next one. See, what is the code for taking? Sorry. What is the code for taking now? So a smart person will directly work with the number of letters first because that's easy to uh, do, right? Taking is six. Now is three. So the code should have six and three. So six and three. Option A is possible. Option B, three and four, wrong. Option C, again six and three possible. Can't be determined is also wrong because answer can be determined. You know, answer can be determined and uh, option 5 none of this is there so either 1 or c i mean i mean either option a or option c or option e now find out the code for uh, taking t is the letter right t is the 20th letter in the english alphabet right you should know all these positions numerical positions t is the 20th letter 20th letter from front so what is the 20th letter from behind 26 minus 20 6 plus 1 7th seven letter from behind is g so it should be g so it should start with g in fact, I don't have to worry about the first code because it is G6, uh, G60 and G16, both of them, right? If I try to find out what is the code for now, it will be easy. I mean, it will be, I'll be able to eliminate the option faster, right? So let's let's find out the code for now. N, N is what letter? N is 14th letter. N is 14th letter from front, right? N is the 14th letter from front. What is 14th letter from behind? I mean, you will know that it is M. 14 letter from behind will be what? 26 minus 14, 12 plus 1, 13. Uh, 12 plus 1, 13. 13 letter is M. So the next code should start with M. Option A also get eliminated. So answer is either option C or option E. Now if you still want to confirm before marking the answer, you have to do the complete thing. You have to find out the code for G as well. You know that G will become T. See if T has become G, it's obvious. If T has become G, G has become G will become T. So G will become T. So G60 is done. Uh, w. W is the fourth letter from the end. So fourth letter from front will be D. Or W is the 23rd letter from the front. 23rd letter from the end will be D. So option C, G60 and M3D is the answer. Okay. Let's let's go for the next one now, quickly. What does X7V stand for? X7V stand for? I think X7V has got seven letters, right? So look at the options B, C, D and A. All are eliminated. Option E has to be the answer. Why? The word should have seven letters. Complete has got eight letters, job has got three letters, this has got four letters, and taking has got six letters. So obviously answer should be option E. You agree? It should be option E. But then I think like I said, there is an error in the question itself, as far as I understand, because complete was used in the first phrase itself, right? And X7 is the code here. So we can you know going by what has happened here. I mean keeping the error aside, option A should be considered, but strictly speaking, option e none of this has to be the answer strictly option e none of this has to be the answer because the code for complete should be x8v it should not be x7v x8v apologies for that but i'm sure all of you have got the logic let's let's look at the next one try this one now what is the code for amazing 
So amazing has got how many letters? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 letters. So first eliminate based on the number of letters. Option A, option B, option C are eliminated. Either Z70 or can't. can't be determined also is not possible. You know that answer can be determined. Yes or no? You know that answer can be determined. So I don't have to worry about anything. I can clearly and very easily mark option D as the answer. Right? Option D, Z70 can be taken as the answer. Right? Next one. G60 and Q3, why is the code for which of the following? So six letters and three letters. This is eliminated. Eliminated. Four letters and three letters. Six letters and three letters. Six letters and four letters. So either option C or option E. Now understand, here also comes a technique. Sometimes what happens is when you're solving such questions in the exam, you'll have very less time. Let, let's say you're trying it in the last 10 seconds. In just in the last 10 seconds. Now in the last 10 seconds, if you are able to eliminate A, D and B easily, don't worry about completing the question. You can, you can mark option C as the answer. Of course, there is a risk. The risk can be option E. None of this is correct. Option C may be wrong, right? But there is a 50-50 chance. There is a high chance that option C is the answer. If you don't want to take any risk, then complete it. Then you have to complete it, right? Anyway, I can also see that G60 was used in the third phrase. In the third phrase, the word is taking. So taking can be considered. Q3Y. Q3Y was considered in the first phrase. In the first phrase, the words with three letters are either the or job. So there is a possibility that the answer can be taking the also. Answer will either be taking the or taking job. Yes or no? The or job. So check one of the letters. It will be easy. Yes or no? For example, here B is the last letter, right? B is second from front. So second from N should be Y. Yes. So Q3Y should be for job. Confirm now. So option C is the answer. So the point that I'm trying to make here, guys, is that try and avoid as much as verification. Uh, I mean, try to avoid as much verification as possible. Well, you can always verify and complete the solution. But what is the point? If you are able to eliminate the options directly, you better do it. Okay. So I hope all of you have got the context of this. Let me present the next set of questions to you all, which is on your screens now. And this time it is going to have one symbol, one letter and one number. There's a symbol, this letter and there's a number. Okay. So the question is here on your screens now. So this time he says in a certain code language, some statements are coded as below. Awareness program for road permits are the first week. President committed frontier railways. There was clock. C versus E. All right. Okay. So I can see a lot of answers have uh, come. I mean, come in here uh, for this question from the second set of uh, coding and decoding. Now, like you can see, this time there are three elements. There is a symbol, there is a number, and there is a letter. And each one is arrived at using certain logic. Okay. So we have to consider all these three, or we should ideally know all the three uh, reasons, and then. Uh, mark the answers but if you're able to eliminate the options nothing like it so let us discuss the solution for this one i mean most of you have marked option c as the answer which is hash 8g or hashtag 8g but uh, there have been some uh, other responses as well so let's quickly check that yeah like like some of you have marked option E. Okay, so let me take this now, sharing the screen with you again with the same question. 
and here we go so see what it says in a certain code language some statements are coded as follow awareness program for is coded as dollar 8h copyright to i a uh, hash 8v road permits are is dollar 2v hash 6h at the rate 3w the first week again codes are given president committed frontier railways is given and there was clock is also given so if you observe the uh, codes closely a symbol a letter and a sorry a symbol a number and a letter now the question is very easy here right which of the following will be the code of president i mean easy to at least understand which of the following will be the code for president so we have to find out the code for president where is president president has been used in the fourth phrase here so answer should either be hash 8g copyright 7i beta hw or at the rate 7h right can't be determined cannot be the answer remember because answer can be determined definitely now again if you see copyright 8g is not there in the options at all i mean if, if i see president should be one of these four right copyright 8g which is option a is not there in the codes at all so option a is also eliminated option b hash 8d is also wrong because hash 8d is not there in the options i mean it's not there in the codes here so b is also wrong option c hash 8g is possible or option e none of this now in such a case even if you don't get any logic or even if you have not spent a second in finding out what the logic is you should mark the answer as c or e because a b and d are eliminated without doing anything right a b d are getting eliminated without doing anything answer should either be c or it has to be e all right now let me explain you how the answer is hash 8g hash 8g is the correct answer but how did we arrive at that what what make us get that as answer now here you have to understand the complete logic simple if you see the number in each code denotes the number of letters in the word minus one for example look at awareness how many letters are there one two three four five six seven eight nine letters program one two three four five six seven eight nine sorry yeah nine letters again four has got three letters if you observe the codes have got eight eight and two so actually it is nine minus one nine minus one and three minus one you're getting it so the number which is being used in the code is the number of letters in the word minus one if you look at the second phrase here four letters permits has got seven letters and three letters four seven three so the code should have three six two you see three six and two the first week three letters five letters four letters three five four means what two four three two letters four letters three letters similarly president committed frontier railways you can count the number of letters and decide the code it is there is a high possibility that just by looking at the number of letters you will be able to decide the code so when i look at the word president here since there are how many letters are there one two three four five six seven eight eight letters are there sorry president has got one two three four five nine letters are there now when there are nine letters in the word the code should have eight the code should have the number eight but here if you see there are two words two codes with the number eight so answer can either be hash 8g or beta at the rate w beta at the rate w so that is not enough just figuring out the number of letters is not going to be enough in answering this question so we have to figure out the uh, other things as well now before going to the symbol let me explain you how to get the letter here how did we get g here now this g here is nothing but the reverse letter from the front end i mean reverse letter for the last letter of the given word for example let me let me take up uh, the word week let me just explain you using the word week week there are four letters so the code should have three now k k is the 11th letter from the front end in the english alphabet what is the 11th letter from the back end from the front if the 11th letter is k what is the 11th letter from the back end 26 minus 11 plus 1 26 minus 11 is 15 15 plus 1 is 16 16th letter is p so it should be p and for w for words starting with w the code is always at the rate now you may ask me how do you know this it is fixed i mean for this code it is always fixed at the rate you, you see any word which starts with w will have the code as uh, at the rate in it i mean the, the symbol in the code will be at the rate so week will be at the rate 3p so getting it so we already knew how to get the number now we have also understood how to get the letter this letter is nothing but the uh, letter in the reverse order based on the last letter here similarly if i take president president has got nine letters so the code should have eight the last letter of the president is t t 
is the twentieth letter from the front end. What is twentieth letter from the back end? What is twentieth letter from the back end? Twentieth letter from the back end is G. So it should be G. So I know that the code of president should have eight and G, and eight and G is only one possibility here. So option C is the correct answer. Now you may ask me, how do you know hash will come here? It's simple. For every word starting with P, for every word starting with P, the symbol used here in this coding is hash. Now, is this standard? No, this is not standard. This is examiner's choice. This is the choice of the paper setter. He is using hash. Tomorrow, if you have to design a question, you may use a heart symbol here. Or if you know somebody else has to decide, uh, you know, design the question, he may use let's say a rhombus here. The symbol is of your choice. If you observe, every word which starts with P here will have the code hash. Will have the symbol hash. You see hash. Permits P will have hash. Here there is no P, so there won't be any hash. Here there is president P, so there will be hash. Here there is no P, so there is no hash. So likewise, for every first letter, there is a prefixed code. So president is always hash. Right? I mean P is always hash, not president. P is always hash. W is always at the rate. And so on. Now, what are these things? Do we know these things? No. It depends on question. It just depends on the question. Symbols are prefixed. Symbols are pre prefixed. Who decided these symbols? The one who was setting the paper decided the symbols. There is no rule to this. There is no rule here. You are getting it? So, don't try to beat your head and find out how we, how do we know that hash is for P and how do we know alpha is for W. We do not know. It's all pre-decided. It's all pre-decided. Now, for example, here I know that the code for for is definitely going to be copyright 2i. Why is it going to be copyright 2i? Because for has got three letters. So the code should have number two. So for is always copyright 2i. This should tell me that f is always copyright. F is always copyright. So for, for example, tomorrow if he says, what is the code for uh, uh, from? What will I do? From has got four letters. From starts with f. So it should be copyright. From has got four letters. So four minus one, three should come here. M is the 13th letter from the front end. So 13th letter from the back end is N. So answer should be copyright three N. That's how it works. Now some of you must be really surprised. I mean, how do they decide? That's how it is. And that's the reason I'm saying there's no method. There is no method in you know in, in when you're answering such questions it's all trial and error now does it mean that every question of this type will have p as hash will use hash as a symbol for p no the next question immediately next question next set of questions may have something else are you able to follow so i think uh, with all this the the takeaway that i have is coding and decoding definitely is an important topic because it is usually carried a weightage of five marks in bank exams but then the best method always is I, I would not suggest skip these questions immediately because I mean in, in case of arrangements and puzzles skipping is an ideal choice but in these type of questions skipping is not an ideal choice because it is possible that by spending 15-20 seconds you may get the right logic but don't try to keep trying it out till you get the answer don't take it personally right don't take it personally why Who, what are you trying to prove there don't waste your precious time give it a try if you get the answer well and good Otherwise, there's no point in trying it. Okay. The only thing that you must be prepared for uh, in, in answering such questions is the sequence of the letters A to Z. You should know the position of each of the letters there. For example, T. You should not be doing A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J in the exam and then T is 20. If this is what you want to do, then don't go for the exam. You are not fit for the exam. 26 letters. 26 numerical positions you must learn by heart. What is the position of R? 18. What is the position of P? It is 16. What is the position of W? It is 23. What is the position of A? Everybody will say 1. A is 1. What is the position of B? We will say 2. What is the position of G? Some of you will start thinking. G. No. If A is 1, G is 7. You should learn it by heart. You should mug it up. As simple as that. You should mug it up. And I will tell you the easiest way to start is start with your name. For example, if your name is Vinod, right? Find out the position of V, I, N, O, D. Five are done there itself. Total, how many letters do we have? 26 letters here, right? Kitna time lagega? 26 letters yaad karne mein. Right? Start with your letter. And then start with your girlfriend's or boyfriend's name. And half of the letters will be over by that time. Right? And highly likely if you are from... Okay, let me not uh, comment that. But if your name is long, then even better, right? 
more let number of letters you will learn very interestingly right very keen anyway the point i'm trying to make is you should know all the numerical positions from 1 to 26 reverse i would not uh, request you to learn by heart that's not a uh, good idea i mean you don't have to learn reverse positions by heart simple calculation 26 minus the number plus 1 whatever number you get that position you already know for example i want the reverse letter for r i know that r is 18 26 minus 18 8 plus 1 9th 9th nine letter is i done why do i learn it by heart again you are able to follow don't waste your time all right dhruvil says my name is dhruvil so dhruvil has got seven letters and all seven are unique letters so seven positions you should know d is 4 h is 8 r is 18 u is 21 v is 22 i is 9 and l is 12 done I mean, done as in I already know it by heart, so you have to also learn it by heart. And then suppose you want the reverse of D, D is 4, reverse will be 26 minus 4 plus 1, 23, which is W. You want the reverse of L, L is 12, 26 minus 12, 14 plus 1, 15, 15 is O, done. So learn it by heart, otherwise these will become a lot more time consuming, right? Let me now uh, present the next set of questions. I mean, let's let's take up one or two more questions here and then look at the next set. So here's the next one. Which of the following will be the code of railways awareness? So try to eliminate the options. Why do you want to do the whole thing? Railways has got how many letters? Eight letters. So it should have seven in the code. Awareness has got how many letters? Five plus four, nine. So it should have eight. Seven and eight. A is eliminated. B is eliminated. C is eliminated. D is eliminated. So option five has to be the answer. There's no other choice. See, don't complete it. Don't try to complete it. That would be a waste of time. That will be a waste of time. Yes or no? Railways awareness. First, I'll go by number because number is the easiest thing to establish. The moment I know 7 and 8, I see that A, B, C, D all are wrong. And hence, option 5 has to be the answer. You're getting it? This is called smartness. Figuring out the exact code for railways, exact code for awareness, and then marking the answer is not called smartness. That's called dumbness. You are behaving dumb there right eliminate is the best way which of the following will be the code for minister first go by number one two three four five six seven eight of course all of them have got seven here so number will not really help but seven should be the number eight letters so seven should be the number next i will not beat my head in finding out the symbol i'll first find out the last letter here it is r right r is 18 so what is 18 in the reverse order 26 minus 18 8 plus 1 9 ninth letter is i it should end with i Oh, all three are ending with I. So I, I can't really do anything about it. Now I'll actually have to find out the symbol as well. I'll have to find out the symbol as well. Now how will I find out the symbol for M? See, understand, can't be determined is a possible answer here if there is no word starting with M. You are able to follow. I will know the codes of only those letters. I will know the symbols for only those letters which are given in the code here. A, P, F, R, P, A, T, F, W. P, C, F, R, T, W, C, that's it. So M, the word starting with M has not been used at all. Hence, I cannot determine the answer. Option D will be the answer in this case. Remember, option D will be the answer. Can't be determined. This time can't be determined. You are getting it? This time it will be can, cannot be determined. I mean, I was wrong when I ruled it out immediately. I thought there will be a word starting with M. But see, in this case, answer cannot be determined. Why? There's no word starting with them. So actually, if you see, I'm wasting my time. I wasted my time in finding out 7 and I. I should have first checked whether M is there or not. Since M is not there, answer straight away can be taken as cannot be determined. Next one, which of the following will be the code for first program? Five letters here. So four program has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine letters. So it should be eight. Four, eight. Four, eight. Uh, understand again yeah i think we should not eliminate based on the order there because it could be 8 4 also now let me first look at the letters f do we have yeah first is here okay so there's there's one more way that you can work out right the code for first you know will add either be acha first has got how many letters five letters right so it should be four which is the code before yeah it is fixed the code for first is copyright 4g so check copyright 4g is available here Copyright 4G is not there. Copyright 4G is available here as well. So can't be determined is also eliminated. Answer should either be option A or option C or option E. Now look for program. Program has got nine letters, right? So its code should have eight. Now answer could either be $8H or $8V. 
so here we have dollar 8v here we have this also is eliminated 7 4 is eliminated because 7 can't be done so answer is either option a or option e now how do you decide which is correct a or e go further next step see first definitely is going to be copyright 4g only we have already checked the confusion is is it hash 8v or dollar 8h let's check that program ends in e right e is the fifth letter fifth letter from the end will be 26 minus 5 plus 1 21 plus 2 21 plus 1 22 right 22 is v so 8v it should have 8v yeah then definitely hash 8v this is not the code so option a is the answer all right and similarly which of the following will be the code for the clock the clock clock is here right clock has got five letters okay there also has got five letters the where is the it should have two in the code so percentage 2v percentage 2v the definitely is going to be percentage 2v so percentage 2v is not there percentage 2v is there percentage 2v is not there percentage 2v is not there so either b or e within no time within like four to five seconds you will know answer is either b or e now how do you decide which is correct you have to check the code for clock what is the code for clock clock will have four in it the uh, four in the code so either percentage 4b or beta 4p so beta 4p is given none of this is also given so how do you check k k is the 11th letter right so p it should end with p so beta 4p yeah this should be beta 4p yeah so this has got beta 4 option b will be the answer clear okay let's quickly look at the last set this time i'm not going to solve all the questions for you but let's let's look at the last set so so let me tell you guys we are done with two sets both of them had a unique logic behind it here's the third one again there's no method to solve it there's there's no method there's no standard method to arrive at the answer but yeah you can definitely go for trial and error so i'll present this one for about 45 seconds and then discuss the logic with you all here we go quick never try to bluff extra need in a mount train was fast all sorry train way fast all tree air clean may try it out now okay the time is up let's let's try this out now so look at the codes here now in the first phrase here is never try to bluff codes have been given similarly extra need in mount train way fast all tree air clean may now never try to bluff there is a symbol there is a number and there is a letter so how do we fix each one of them let's let's count the number of letters that may give us some logic five letters three letters two letters and five letters here but the numbers used are all six fifteen 915 6 15 9 15 but if you actually observe see 5 into 3 is 15 3 into 3 is 9 2 into 3 is 6 and 5 into 3 is 15 so basically how do we get the number the number in the code is actually equal to 3 into the number of letters 3 into the number of letters 
you can check other uh, phrases as well extra has got five need as four in as two mount as five so it should be 15 12 6 15 see 15 12 6 15 of course there are two 15 so we may not be able to decide which one is for what but at least the number logic you know how do we get the number it's a multiple of three right the number of letters multiplied by three number of letters multiplied by three yeah now let's focus on getting the so so maybe if you want to answer the question you can just check what is the quote for environment he says right one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven eleven letters eleven letters into three thirty three it should have thirty three in it so a c d are eliminated it should either be f hash 33 or f and 33 now how do you get the how do you get the letter i mean of course letter also will not help here because both of them are starting with f but let's let's look at the letter as well how do you get the letter letter anyone any any idea about how do we get the letter letter is simple letter is letter is actually the first letter of the word plus one for example uh, first letter here is n right n plus one let me write the logic letter is equal to first letter plus one so n n plus one See, n is 13, uh, 14, right? 14 plus 1, 15. 15th letter is what? O. So, for n, it is O. So, I can now say that the code for never is going to be O at the rate 15 because I have decided on the letter and the number here. Similarly, try the first letter is T, right? T plus 1. T plus 1 is U. T plus 1 is U. So, it should start with U. So, it could be U. Yeah, it could be U percentage 6 or U hash 9. But since there are 3 letters, 3 into 3 is 9. So, it should be U hash 9. T, T again U, U percentage 6 and bluff, first letter is B, right, B plus 1, B plus 1 is C, it should start with C, yeah, the only choice is C percentage 15. So, letter is also simple, letter is plus 1, first letter of the word plus 1, I mean the next position basically, plus 1 here means numerical position of first letter plus 1. So, based on that, can we fix environment? No, again not possible because this word here starts with E, E plus 1 is F both the quotes start with f so we'll now have to work on the symbol now how do we get the symbol how do you get the symbol how do you get the symbol now the logic behind symbols used here is very very complex the logic behind symbol is depending it de depends on the number of vowels symbol depends on the number of vowels now tell me how many of you think you'll be able to understand such a complex logic in the exam? You understand? The symbol used there depends on the number of vowels. Like in the previous example, we had seen that the symbol used is fixed. Depending on the first letter of the word, the symbol is fixed. Here, the symbol is fixed depending on the number of vowels. So, for example, never has got how many vowels? Two vowels. So, for two vowels, what is the uh, logic? I mean, what is the symbol? At the rate. Two vowels. E and E. Let's let's understand. Let's let's write all everything and decide at the rate. Try has got zero vowels. Zero vowels, right? The word try has got zero vowels. For zero vowels, what's the logic? Try was uh, hash. Now, if you see word two has got only one vowel. The word two has got only one vowel. O. And for two, what's the code that we have used? Percentage. The word bluff has got only one vowel again you see bluff has got only one vowel u and for that also we have used percentage so very clear for one vowel you'll use percentage for zero vowels you'll use, ha use hash for two vowels both of which are same you have used at the rate now look at the other words to decide right other words to decide extra extra has also got two vowels need has got two vowels in has got one vowel mount has got two vowels right so you see for two ovals we have discussed right already for two ovals it should be at the rate so since there are two ovals two ovals and two ovals there are three at the rates at the rate at the rate at the rate for uh, one oval there should be percentage so here is the percentage you're able to follow so number of ovals are you know number of ovals here depends on the number of sorry the symbol used here depends on the number of ovals train has got two ovals a and i so it should have what it should have at the rate 
Now the only uh, code with at the rate here is u at the rate 15. So I can directly fix train as u at the rate 15. Way has got only one vowel. For one vowel, it should be percentage. Fast has also got one vowel. All has also got one vowel. So all three are percentage, percentage, percentage. So now for me to find out the code for way, I should look at the other logic. What is the other logic? Three letters, three into three, nine. It should have nine. But there are two codes with nine. I should look at the third step. What is the third step? First, it is W. W plus 1. X. It should be X percentage 9. So, V is X percentage 9. All. All then should be B percentage 9. And of course, fast. Fast should be G percentage 2. So, this is how it depends. Right? Now, if you look at the word uh, environment, see, I already know. If I have to if I have to eliminate, I know that hash is used for zero vowels. Hash here is used for zero vowels. So can I use hash for environment? No, because here there are one, two, three, four vowels. There are four vowels. So for four vowels, there should be some other symbol. What is that symbol? I don't know, but it cannot be hash. So B is also eliminated. If B is also eliminated, then option E is the answer. Ampersand. And now I can decide that for four vowels, I'm using ampersand. Of course, I do not know the code for two, uh, three vowels here. I will figure that out. I mean, whenever there is a requirement. Now, honestly, tell me how many of you think you will be able to get this logic in the exam. I will be very honest to myself. I will not be able to solve this in the exam. But I will also be smart in the exam. What will I do? I will spend 20 seconds. I may get the logic for the number of uh, the number used in the code. I may also get the logic for the letter. But I'll definitely not get the logic for the symbol used here. And honestly, let me, you know, also accept this question when it was given to me by our content team, I was not able to solve it. I had to go back to them and ask them, boss, what is the logic? Please help me. And then they gave me the logic. I understood the number of number in the symbol. I also understood the number in the, I mean, the usage of letter, but I couldn't get the reason for the symbol there and i went back to them and they're like okay we have done this depending on the number of vowels and that shook me and i'm sure this can also happen in your exam what does it depend on it depends on how the examiner had thought about framing the question how would we know what he had thought about framing the question we will not know how can we try we can only try i mean there's no standard method but how much time do you want to spend in trying it out so recall my first statement right when i had started the session i told you the best way to solve such questions is to yeah give it a try 15 20 seconds but otherwise just move to the next one yeah okay one interesting question that has come up for this particular one is what if fifth option is given as none of this well the question has been framed in such a way that you will be able to limit four options if fifth option is given as none of this then you will i mean this is not the right framing of question you understand the options have been given in such a way that four options will get eliminated Ampersand, if you see, has not been used elsewhere. In none of the codes here, ampersand has been used. So question was actually framed in that way. It, they cannot ask a question with none of this here. I mean, if both ampersand and none of this are there, then you cannot mark the answer, right? Because actually the answer is cannot be determined. You understand? Strictly speaking, the code for environment cannot be determined. Why? Because I do not know what is the symbol to be used when there are four vowels. You are able to follow. Strictly, the answer should be cannot be determined. Why the answer should be cannot be determined? Answer cannot be determined because I do not know what should be the symbol used for four letters. I mean, for, for four vowels. The symbol is not known to me. But what I definitely know is A, B, C, and D are wrong. And that is the reason I am marking E as the answer. Okay. Let's take up one more question and then we will close it. What is the code for book thing is important? Book thing is important. So four letters, it should have 12. Multiplied by three, right? Five letters, it should have 15. Two letters, it should have six. Into three, into three. Remember, four into three, five into three, two into three, and then important. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Important is nine. Nine into three, 27. Now, first check for numbers. 12, 15, 6, 27. Eight eliminated. Nine is not required eliminated. Uh, yeah, 12, 15, 6, 27. Eight eliminated. 12, 15, 6, 27. So yeah, A, B and D are eliminated. Answer should either be C or E. Now between C and D, I think we'll now go for letters. So B will have C. B plus 1, right? T plus 1, U. I plus 1, J. I plus 1, J. So C, U, J, J. C, 12. Do we have C, 12? Yes. Do we have U, 15? Yes. J, 6? Yes. J, 27? Yes. 
then J6, yes. Ha, now you see, we should have U15, here it is S15. It, it is wrong, option C is the answer. I don't even have to worry about symbols. Option C will be the correct answer. All right, so this is how you deal with questions on coding and decoding, the new pattern of coding and decoding. How do you deal with it? You can't do anything about it. You just have to try and see if you are able to decipher the logic there. Okay, but yes, practice would help. I mean, if you practice more and more questions of these type, you will be able to think divergently in the exam and in that process, you may get the right logic. Okay, so keep practicing, but again, don't spend too much time in preparation of such questions as well, because you never know. I mean, even if you have practiced 10,000 questions, you may not be able to crack the logic in the exam. And sometimes even without practicing a single question, you may get the logic in the exam. So it all depends. All right. So on that note, let me close the session here. Thank you all for joining us. We'll meet again tomorrow, uh, same time, 4 p.m. for yet another score booster for your SPI clerk's preliminary exam. Until then, keep practicing and yes. Take very good care of yourself.